Aloha ai ai kakou. You know, before I begin, I really would like to thank um, Admiral Kihune. Um, it's such an honor to be introduced by somebody we admire, especially us in the Hawaiian community. First Hawaiian to wear three stars for the United States Navy, former commander for the U.S. Pacific Fleet, a former trustee of Kamehameha Schools at a time when we had some very challenging uh, issues to face and just a tremendous role model uh, for all of us younger guys striving to make a place in this world for us. So please join me in a hand for Admiral Robert Kihune. You know, I'd also like to take this opportunity to recognize a very dear friend of mine and a very dear friend of people in the Chaminade community, Uncle Henry Gomes. Uh, Uncle Henry Gomes passed away this past year. Yeah, please, round of applause for Uncle Henry. <laughs> Uncle Henry Gomes passed away uh, from a long bout of cancer this past year. Uh, he spent decades uh, serving the Chaminade community, starting as a faculty, moving on to being the assistant provost, and then ending his career as the director of Native Hawaiian Partnerships. For those of us in the Hawaiian community, he served as just a humble uh, leader that uh, we all could look up to. And I feel so honored to have been able to call him a friend and a mentor to me. So really dedicate my words to him this evening. You know, I really dwelled hard about my time uh, here this evening with our graduates. And I really, I thought about myself some 20 years back, listening to my commencement speaker. Uh, I remembered his words. He said, follow your passion, follow your passion, follow your passion. And I had no idea what my passion was at that time. <laughs> um, I had no idea what was around the corner for me. Um, what I did know was that I wanted that sheet of paper and I wanted to attend the festivities after this event. <laughs> that was at, was at the top of my mind. But I'm 44 years old, and my life has been through a whirlwind of one unexpected opportunity and challenge after another, and has included a fair amount of trials and tribulations. You know, my mother passed away when I was just a young boy. She had suffered from mental illness at a time when there was little known about the disease, and families pretty much kept it to themselves. I didn't understand how she passed away until I was renewing my license at the age of 17 and I needed to pre present her death certificate to the clerk. And I looked down in the lower right hand corner and I saw carbon monoxide poisoning and I realized at that time pieces started to fall in place for me, understanding what would happen in my early years. Our family was devastated uh, some years later, like so many other families in Hawaii, when my father became addicted to crystal methamphetamine. He had been a great father up until that point. Uh, before that addiction, it was a tough road back for him. It was a tough road for our family. Now, this is the first time that I've ever discussed my mother and father in public, but I wanted to share this part of my life with those who are graduating, who may be facing similar challenges in your life so that you can tell and feel that life does get better and that there's light out there. You know, none of us are here uh, can control the cards uh, that were dealt in life, but we sure can determine what kind of hand we create with those cards. And while I have a little bit more clarity today about where my passion is, um, you know, I'm not exactly sure what's around the next corner for me as well. Um, I feel the same way in a little bit, like I felt some 20 years ago when I sat in your folks' seats. So I thought maybe the best way to spend my 10 minutes with you folks would be to share with you a little bit of a framework that I've created for the journey that's in front of me in hopes that I can bring you along with me. And I wanna share just three simple and quick thoughts with you. And I hope it helps you on your journey. The first is that I've come to believe, for the most part, our competition 
He's lazy. And I would put that in the 90 percentile category. I would take a look around. Are you in the 90 or are you in the 10? Make an early decision to be in the 10. In fact, the 90 percent scare me, and they should scare you because there's lots of them. You know, there's a lot of mediocrity in the world, whereas at the 10 percent, there's a lot of space and the, and the view is clear. You know, another way of describing this is, is being ready. You know, every time I was giving my best effort, opportunity after, after opportunity landed in my lap from places that I least expected it. Tonight already, in the time that you've been here, opportunity has been presented to you, but we didn't see it. For those who saw it, go grab it. But those of us who haven't seen it, and I haven't seen it yet, that means we have to work harder and that clarity will come. The second thought I'd like to share with you, and many people as you move on in life will tell you to find a mentor. I want to twist that a little bit. I want to ask you to focus on being mentorable. There's a big difference in trying to find a mentor and being mentorable. If you haven't already realized it already, you will be, we will real soon, that there's no shortage in the world of people who want to give you advice. But attracting the ones that will have a positive impact on your life takes discipline, it takes commitment, because they are looking for the same 10% that I talked about a little earlier. However, you and I are very fortunate because the generation above me and two generations above you are plentiful and there's a lot of smart people there who want to share their experiences with you. Being mentorable means committing to lifelong learning. It means putting yourself and your work ethic and your thinking, your logic under brutal scrutiny by really, really smart and successful people. It's not having lunch once a month with someone older than you or a periodic phone call to bounce some ideas off of. It's face to face with prepared thoughts. I have a few people that I have the honor to meet with on a consistent basis. It's face to face with prepared thoughts. I prepare for that time together. There's a structure to our meeting and they have 100% of my attention while I'm there. In fact, we have a rule no cell phones. And while we will never, they will never uh, tell me what to do, my actions going forward reflect that discussions. On the flip side, if you find yourself not attracting the mentors that you so desire, the first place we need to look is in the mirror. And the answers will be there. And there's time for us to work to achieve those things. Lastly, and probably the most important, I hope you join me in recognizing that we all need God in our lives. You know, I have three daughters, ages 13, 14, and 15, so you'd think that this would have come to me a lot earlier. <laughs> you know, I, I walk around my house knowing that there's an estrogen time bomb at any given, <laughs> at any given time. <laughs> But with all kidding aside, you know, my wife and daughters um, are, are born and raised Catholic. Um, and although I have not followed any particular religion in my life, I'm convinced that every human being needs guidance from God. And people have different beliefs and what God is, and, and that's okay. But having a spiritual guide that's larger than yourself will help you to get to the 10% we think we should be at. And, you know, we will find as our decisions um, become more important, as they impact more people, that our reliance on God becomes much greater. Um, you know, it's not a, a relationship of convenience. Uh, it's a continuous personal reflection and scrutiny of your life every day from 360 degrees. You know, I've made a personal pact with God. 
And I would ask you to consider the same. To work like it's up to me and to pray like it's up to God. To work like it's up to me and pray like it's up to God. You know, the three things that I've mentioned this evening are not only concepts and values that will help you in your career and my career going forward. They are values that will refine you as a human being, helping you through the toughest of times, preparing you to see around the corner at the opportunities that are coming far beyond the 90 percenters, and without question, help you through the darkest of days. So today, don't worry about not being passionate about something. You know, focus on the three things that I hope we had some time together with. Choose to be in the 10%. Build the discipline to mentor, to be mentorable, and commit your life to lifelong learning. And recognize we all need God. Work like it's up to you. Pray like it's up to God. Congratulations on this very important achievement. Good luck in all that you do. I hope that our paths cross on this journey together. Mahalo.